It's been a hot minute since we last used Malfeasant, and I believe it was way back in October 2021 where the Mao and Lucky Pants combo became super popular thanks to a recent buff. But as it's been a number of months now and new subclasses have come and gone, it's time for us to take a look back at the combo and see if it still stands on today's environment. Is today's setup viable for end game now? Yes, by a lot, and with this setup you can erase champions from existence and deal out some hefty damages against bosses. Now it's not clickbait as I would have been cancelled by now, but Malfeasance in 2022 is looking a lot better than you may think. But before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then do leave a like, a sub and a share for more content like this in the future, I would really appreciate it. As we are leaning into using Malfeasance to its fullest, I would recommend you focus on purely damage to get the most out of its base form and the continuous stacks after 5 shots are landed. This means you will need to use Lucky Pants in this scenario and try to land as much critical shots as possible to fully render a number of combatants useless. Before we go more into the exotic and mod setup used, let's first go into the aspects and fragments used. For aspects, we have On Your Marks where getting position killed will grant you and ally a boost in handling of low speed. We then have Knock Em Down which allows our blade barrage to produce more projectiles, but also allows our knives to get back to us if we are radiant and get a kill with them. For Fragments, we have Ember Torches where Power Melee hits make you radiant, Ember Ashes which grants us more Scorch stacks on the target, Ember Solus where Radiant and Restoration effects applied to you have increased duration, Ember Searing where Defeating Scorch Combatants grant us melee energy, and Ember of Eruption where your Solar Ignition has increased area of effect. For Stats, you should aim for 80 in Discipline, 50 in Intellect and 60 in Strength. Although, I will admit, resilience should be even higher than shown, but this is because stat armor being funky to tackle with. For key mods, powerful wealth for plus 2 worlds created instead of 1, high energy fire for a plus 20% weapon buff while charged with light, frontal wisdom for a plus 15 intellect stat, elemental charge for becoming charged with life via wells, and melee wall maker for quitting wells via charged melee. As mentioned, we want to build into the damage stacks as best as possible, so for our subclass choices, it's recommended you keep your Radiant buff active as long as possible. And in this case that your Radiant is out, you can easily swap to High Energy Fire instead and keep the flow of damage going. And yes, I know a lot of you will say that these don't stack, and I know. The point here though is to make sure that our option of sustaining high damage is always there even when we are out of one choice. Basically, if Plan A fails, then plan B will cover us, and vice versa. For weapons, our main focus will be Malfeasance in the primary slot while secondary and heavy is down to the user and down to the activity being played. Azotic primaries received a 40% damage buff for combatants quite a while back and as of now, Mao has the ability to eccentrically stun unstoppable champions. This allows the weapon to feel almost like a special to heavy weapon within itself, with high DPS and champion stun on ability, which I expect to see a lot of players soon to pick up and use. With the weapon, Lucky Punch and Damage Buff together, we are capable of turning enemies inside out with a quick burst from a weapon and the increased damage can be game changing in the right environment. Only thing to be super aware of is that you need to land critical hits while using Lucky Pants for the full damage buff to go into effect. Now I do know there are a few enemies that have a big crit spot but move about a lot and they will be a pain to deal with at times, but once you get the timing right, they become less of an issue as time goes on. For secondary, I have the Amit AR2 with Ambitious Assassin and Incandescent and nothing too hugely special about the weapon except for the fact that I can use this in champion based content for the season and the fact that Incandescent effect can work towards Ember Searing for more melee regen. You can also go with Callus Mini Tool if you already have one as a fast fire rate might be more of your thing, although you won't be able to use this in end game. On the other hand, the Strident Whistle with Ensemble and Incandescent is a nice alternative to use for distance and requires less shots to use to take out most combatants. For Heavy, we have two options to pick and you can go with Linear Fusion such as Cataclysmic with Bait and Switch and use that to build up even more damage if you want to go all out. On the other hand, you can go with the heavy machine gun such as the Swarm if you have one and use that with tackling arc based shields and getting rid of mages to ultras within a few rounds as possible. Both options are good for the user to pick and use depending on the scenario required, but you do not need to use what is shown as this is more of an example rather than a requirement. 
For stats, stats should focus around discipline and strength at best, with resilience and intellect following after. Now firstly, please ignore the high stat recovery I have, as this is due to my armor rolls rather than personal choices. Secondly, I plan to use my grenades as much as possible to both scorch and ignite targets via my melee combo, but also so I can have a quick way to damage enemies who get too close to comfort with me. I would recommend sticky grenades as they have a much faster cooldown rate compared to the other grenades have around a 2 minute cooldown, although you can swap as you please as the stat alone is at 80. Now, no specific mods are required here unless you plan to use your grenades a lot. So if you wanted to, you can take out the high energy fire mod and add in the elemental ordnance mod instead so you can get two ways of creating wells. But this will hamper your build in terms of long term damage, so do give this a bit of a think. For strength we have ours at 60 which should be the ideal spot to go for as you will be using your knives to become radiant, but at the same time we'll be using it to build stacks and cause ignitions to start. This stat will see a lot of usage within the build as it's the most easiest to proc and keep afloat compared to relying on just the high impact fire mod. For this, having the gambler's dodge can help with getting it back quickly if we mess up and need further help, while 1-2 finisher and outreach helps a lot as well with sustaining this ability for longer. I also added on the infernal whip mod for unstoppable encounters, but this is made redundant when using the following hand cannon. Only put this on if you're in an activity where you face multiple un unstoppables at once. Except from that, you can just go with whatever you think is best. Left over mods, we have Connect Siphon for creating auto power via Connect Weapon, and Heavy Machine Gun Scavenger mod for more ammo and reserves. You may have noticed that big mod gap in my leg armor go to waste. This was for swapping out my Scavenger mod when using a linear instead, but you can add in the Absolution mod until then though. As we have covered all that, let's take a look at the mods we are using first before we head in. For head we have Resilience, Infernal Whip, Connect Siphon and Balfour World mod. Arm we have Discipline, Fastball and High Energy Fire mod. Chest we have Resilience, because of Dampner, Thermal Shot Plating and Fallen to Wisdom mod. Leg we have Strength, Heavy Machine Gun Scavenger and Taking Charge mod. Cloak we have Strength, Outreach, Want to Finisher and Mini Wallmaker mod. There has been quite a big uptick of videos based around this setup for Endgame all of a sudden, and perhaps I thought there was a recently new meta being made apparent that we should all get on board with. This wasn't so much the case, but rather the uptick was more of a result of seeing Mal being updated to now instinctively stop Unstoppable after 5 hits. This means that you don't need to rely on using Unstoppable mods now while using the weapon, so you can free that slot up and use Overload or Anti-Barium as you please. This doesn't sound that spectacular as you may think, so let's go over the pros of the build. With this setup, your Malfeasants and the rest of the weapons will be doing far more damage than usual, and like always, will mean that you can take down enemies faster without needing to use your abilities or super to help you out. Activating Lucky Pants Exotic Trait along with Malfeasants stacking damage is all you would need to take out a champion before needing to reload, as from testing this, it was done on both Legend and Master content separately, and the results are pretty great. The large magazine size on Mal, smooth and ease of use, and flexibility to rack up damage so quickly makes using heavy weapons redundant unless you're using it for bosses only. Because of how strong the build is, it allows users to really go anywhere with this build and style, as you don't even need to use solar to get the most out of it. I've used void subclass in the past so I can debuff targets and kill them faster via the combo, but this can be done with arc and status as well, so there isn't a limit to what subclass you require as the setup is ready in place. With this being the case, does this mean high energy fire and radiant is useless in this case with the damage already being good? No, and the reason being is that Procky Locky Pants won't always work if the target has a small crit spot or moves around a lot. Remember, you are on a timer that you need to be precise with and you can do a lot of damage in the time frame, but if you mess up, then you have to wait to reset it. With the two damage mods, you can prevent this from dropping DPS by too much, but still putting a lot of damage either way. This is more of a personal choice to be fair, so you don't need to follow my footsteps, but the Exotic and Subclass combo I assume that this can be used in GMs and Master Raids as the damage for it is there. Whether you want to risk it or not is down to you, but I would say give it a try and see what offers in the end, and if you don't like it, well, play around with it and see where you go from there. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff. Link is down below. But once again, thank you for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one.